Good morning all. This is Dr. Sue. I hope everybody is having a great week. I am continuing on with our weekly content. And for this week, we are going to talk about dehydration. And dehydration is is uh, can be a scary word. And I think I should probably title this more keeping our little ones hydrated <laughs> to put more of a positive spin because dehydration is something that we see when we're not able to get in the fluids that we need. And so what I'm going to talk about is what dehydration is, what it can look like on this audio and um, talk a little bit about that. And in the second audio for the week, I will talk about prevention and management. And hopefully this will be helpful. Remember, these are short and sweet, to the point, trying to give busy parents time uh, to get um, concise information with regard to their children and and concerns and, and any issues that they're having. So this will be short and hopefully it'll be helpful. So dehydration in general has multiple degrees, and generally the kids that I see are mildly to moderate dehydrated when they come into the urgent care because they haven't been drinking. Again, prevention is the key to that, and that's why many of my families will always hear me say, provide ample fluids, provide ample fluids. And uh, that's always along with almost every condition that we see with, with children and adults, too. Fluids are something our bodies cannot do without. Our bodies can do without food for days. For liquid, um, not as long at all. And we want to make sure that we keep our bodies hydrated well. So mild to moderate dehydration, you'll start to notice um, more of dry lips. You'll start to notice that the kids are looking a little sunken in um, with their eyes, with their faces. They start to get more tired. And generally, you just notice a mopey child, even for an adult who's dehydrated like that when we're sick and not feeling great. Um, moderate, uh, mild to moderate dehydration doesn't, doesn't generally show up in ways that are always easy for parents to see. But I think when you look at just how your child is behaving, that's going to be helpful for you. The mucous membranes will be the first thing, such as the lips, um, even around the area around the eyes. That's what parents generally notice as well. And when you bring a child in to the urgent care, we always assess, or even to your pediatrician, when I see kids at Purely Pediatrics as well, and at your pediatrician's office. What we start to do is we just look at the big picture. We look at those mucous membranes. Babies that are moderately uh, dehydrated can start to show signs of a sunken fontanelle, but that's generally... We try to prevent that from occurring. So that's not something I can be honest and tell you that I see very often because we try to get to infants before they get to that point. Um, so the other things that you'll see that when you bring the kids in to see us, we'll look at their capillary refill. We'll look at their when we touch their fingertips or we put our, our um, fingers and push down on their arms. We want to notice the um, time it takes for that pink to return to their skin. And kids that are moderately dehydrated, even to severely dehydrated, can have that refill take three to four seconds, when in general I want to see nice pink return within one to two seconds. And those are medical things. I I don't expect you guys to do that. I will never ask a family what the capillary refill is. But what I will ask a family is how a child is urinating, and that's always a good indication of how we're doing with hydration, and that's something parents can always be aware of. And I will ask them, how much have they drank? How much do you feel like they've had today within the last 24 hours? And then we always talk about vomiting, why they may be getting dehydrated. Is it because of an intake issue? Are they not taking enough fluids in? Or are they losing fluids when they have the chance to take them in? You know, those are kind of where our minds go um, to understand what's happening. So... um, Parents will also notice, again, those mucous membranes, the lips, uh, the tongue, the mouth will look dry. The uh, eyes will look a little sunken because those are mucous membranes, too. And children that start to get mildly to moderately dehydrated just start to not feel well. And parents always they have a feeling when something's going on, especially because our, our kids are still oftentimes relying on us to provide the fluids for them. 
So those are the signs that you'll start to notice with dehydration. You know, you already know what your child does in terms of urination. When we have dehydration occurring, we're definitely going to see a decreased frequency of urination. But we're not in trouble, per se, until we start to see that there has been no dehydration um, for eight hours. And if a child hasn't urinated for eight hours or so, or even more than that, and they are typically good um, urinators before that, and they take in a good amount of fluids, that's when I, I, you know, I also key into that. And I always ask the parents, how are you feeling that they're doing? Because we know, we know how our kids are. Dehydration can occur with many illnesses. Fevers are one of those things that increase our metabolism and make our body utilize more of the fluids in order to keep our body active and, and um, our energy processes working. So fevers can contribute greatly to dehydration. And that's one reason why I always talk to families about a medicating for fevers purely because we want the children to feel good enough so they keep drinking. Fevers make us want to sleep and if kids sleep they're not going to be drinking. So fevers are something that can very much contribute to dehydration. Vomiting and diarrhea those are big contributors also so we try to understand why those two symptoms may be occurring. You may have one or the other or both and if you have both you're even more at risk of dehydration. And uh, that's definitely something that we, we get concerned of. Kids with uh, illnesses in general, that it can include sore throats, stuffy noses, um, fevers, those just make us feel sick and we want to sleep and we're just not interested in really drinking. By the time our bodies tell us that we are thirsty, we are already dealing with an element of, of dehydration. Unfortunately, our bodies aren't great at telling us when we are getting dehydrated until it's becoming significant. So as soon as your child starts to show symptoms of an illness, symptoms of fever, push those fluids, start to do that for me. Because the more hydrated they are, the better they're going to feel and the less likely it's going to be where dehydration is going to be something that's going to complicate the issue with them. Before I end this uh, audio, I want to mention that hydration in terms of children, I love products such as Pedialyte um, and any kinds of, of alternative electrolyte drinks for children. Um, Pedialyte has less sugar than Gatorade. Gatorade does have quite a bit more sugar than something like um, like a Pedialyte that's generally in the infant aisle. You have um, sodium, potassium, and small amounts of sugar in, in uh, Pedialyte that's really going to be helpful to keep your little one's blood sugar stable, keep their electrolyte levels stable as we're, they're dealing with an illness as well. Um, as we get older, Gatorade, Body Armor, they're all wonderful. Water is something that generally you will only hear me tell to give if they are tolerating solids. Water in general and dairy, unfortunately, aren't well tolerated when we are dealing with inflammation from a virus, whether it could be upper respiratory or it could be um, related to a tummy bug. So what I want you to, to know is that there's many different solutions you can use for dehydration and to prevent dehydration. And again, Pedialyte, Gatorade, Body Armor, um, Popsicles are wonderful. At the Urgent Care, you'll notice that we use Popsicles quite frequently. Um, Pedialyte does make Popsicles too. If your little ones do not like Pedialyte, it's okay. You know, we, we understand that and that's where Popsicles can really come and play a part. And what's good about Popsicles is that they do have uh, sugar in them, which our body needs to be able to uh, continue to function. And if we don't take in enough sugar as, as a child or an adult in a 24-hour period, then we can definitely start to feel uh, much more lethargic and uh, fatigued. So those are the, um, the big areas I wanted to mention 
With regard to infants and formula versus breastfeeding, remember dairy, if, if they're having an issue with vomiting, dairy is going to be a tough thing for them to tolerate for the first few days during and after the illness. So that's when Pedialyte is going to be significantly helpful for you. And your doctor will help you understand how much to use and, and when to kind of think about starting back with the formula versus the Pedialyte. But breast milk is non-dairy. So breast milk is something I generally tell families to continue to do, continue to breastfeed, continue to pump and bottle if that's what you're doing. And Pedialyte's also an option if needed. So um, there's many different scenarios. So I just wanted to touch on a few of them and let you know that that uh, dairy can be a culprit with vomiting. So we try to make sure that families know of the other options available. All right, so listen, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the management of dehydration in the next audio, and hopefully this was helpful. I'll see you there.